Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance and today I'm going to be talking about Workhorse Group. And I kind of felt an obligation to make a video on this stock and in the end I wanted to make a video on this stock. But the reason I felt obligated to do so is because I was really the first YouTuber to talk about Workhorse on YouTube. I was making videos when I was buying shares at less than $3 a share. I'll even put a screenshot up right here. So I think it's safe to say I have been along for the ride with Workhorse ever since the beginning, ever since the hype started. I'm going to be covering four main sections in this video. The first one is just going to be a little bit of comedic relief. I promise it won't last very long, but I just can't help myself. Following that, I'm going to be covering why we didn't win the contract straight from the Postmaster General's mouth. And then I'm going to be talking about why Workhorse actually still has a small chance to win this contract, or at least get the contract reversed. And then lastly, I'm going to be talking about what I've done with my shares. Am I still holding? Did I buy more? Did I sell? I'll get into that to close out the video. So as I mentioned, the first thing I want to cover in this video is just some comedic relief surrounding this entire situation because it's so easy to get down. It's so easy to get frustrated when something doesn't go the way it should, especially if you're betting on that thing going the way it should. And bears and shorts alike have been pouring salt on our wounds telling us, We told you so. I've even had my own share of bashers, like this guy. I'll put two comments on the screen right now for you guys to read. When a bear or a short comes out and says, I told you so, it's equivalent to you betting on a football game against your own grandpa and your grandpa telling you that you're too young, you don't know anything, and I told you this team was going to win. It makes no sense, so don't give them any credibility, don't give them the time of day, just smile and wave like I like to do. Further, bears have been wrong since 1817. That is 204 years since the New York Stock Exchange was founded. They have been betting against the markets, they've been betting against stocks, and they've been wrong because the markets, for the most part, have gone up in a straight line over time. So we can at least all look back on our workhorse position and say, well, at least we're not bears, right? We haven't been wrong for 200 plus years. We might have been wrong for a few weeks or a few months, but we'll move on. Bears, they're going to continue to be wrong, betting against the markets and losing money. Also, I just want to say, chances are, if somebody is hiding behind a screen on social media trying to tear you or others down... There's likely something else going on in their life that is providing them a lot of negativity and they're just shoving that negativity on somebody else. So in the end, if it puts a smile on their face to try and tear others down, I will gladly take the heat for that because I just want everybody to be happy. So again, as I said, what I like to do is hit them with the little smile and wave. So the last little bit of comedic relief I want to provide is just this TikTok that somebody posted in my Discord server. Now I'm going to plug this really quick. If you guys want to join my private members only Discord server, hit the join button down below located right next to the subscribe button. You also get other perks like buy and sell alerts, early access to new videos and stocks I'm looking at, things like that. So just go check that out if you're interested at all. So I'm going to watch this on my phone right now and I'll also put it up on the screen, but I thought this was absolutely hilarious. The okay, really okay, sad. Okay. It's so accurate too. That's the funny part. It's so accurate. So now that we have all that junk out of the way, let's get back into the video here. I just felt the need to include some of that stuff in this video because you know, you can make the best out of any situation and if people are hating on you, it's because you're succeeding. And if people aren't hating on you, you know you're not succeeding. So you know, when we have bear shorts attacking us, we know we're successful, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about why we didn't get the contract. Why did Workhorse not receive this thing? Even bears and short sellers, at least the smart ones, knew that Workhorse was likely favored to win the contract. There were so many things that lined up pointing straight to Workhorse. So why didn't we get it? Well, straight from the Postmaster General's mouth, the USPS didn't have enough money which I think is a bunch of malarkey because just recently they received $10 billion from the United States government. And with this new Biden administration, I honestly think they would be ecstatic to help provide financing to electrify the fleet or help build out the infrastructure of charging stations for the USPS vehicles. But Postmaster DeJoy says they didn't have enough money. Now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And honestly, when DeJoy was appointed, I was very hopeful 
for the United States Postal Service because he has a great business background. And in my opinion, there's no reason the USPS can't run or shouldn't run like a business does. But plain and simple, awarding the contract to Oshkosh was a horrible business decision. Electric vehicles could save you so much money over time. Not to mention, with all the new laws coming out in different states, banning internal combustion engines from being on the roads by a certain date like 2040, the USPS is just going to have to replace the fleet again because these ICE internal combustion engine vehicles wouldn't be allowed on the streets in these states. So it's just a horrible business decision in my eyes. So in my opinion, DeJoy has kind of let me down. Now, there's always two sides to every story. I'm sure both administrations, Trump administration, Biden administration, and the USPS probably did not communicate as well as they should have. So I can't put all of the blame on DeJoy because there are so many details we don't know. But according to DeJoy, this wasn't a production capacity problem for Workhorse. So in the end, it was nothing that Workhorse did. It was just government inefficiency. And I'm only 19 years old, and I can't tell you how many times I've experienced or seen how inefficient the government is. The government essentially failed us yet again with this USPS contract. There were just so many items that lined up pointing to Workhorse receiving this thing. Like one of Trump's last orders he instated, issuing a Buy American order to the United States Postal Service. Guess who the only 100% American manufacturer left in the running for this contract was? Workhorse. Then we had Biden come out and say he wants to electrify the entire government fleet. Did that happen? No. These are going to be internal combustion engines with only 10% of the fleet being electric and all of them are being purchased from Oshkosh. There are just so many things that don't add up. Everything was pointing at Workhorse. I could go back to my original videos and there was plenty of evidence that Workhorse should be favored for this contract. But like often is the case, the government doesn't always work the most efficiently or make the most sense with their decisions. When the announcement first came out that Oshkosh had won the contract, we really weren't sure if it was 100% of the contract or only a small portion of the contract. But after Workhorse released a statement this morning, it's pretty clear that Oshkosh was awarded 100% of this contract, unfortunately. But that also leads me into why Workhorse still has a chance to get this contract under their belt. And there are a few things happening that could really lead to the reversal of this decision. For starters, Workhorse is pushing back, asking for an explanation. How and why did we lose this thing? And that statement came out this morning. I'll put it up on the screen and there will also be a link to it down in the description below. The second thing, Zeta, the Zero Emission Transportation Association, has asked DeJoy to reverse his decision on this because it directly conflicts with the current administration's plans that they have set forth. And third, just today we found out that the Biden administration is in the process of vetting candidates to nominate to serve on the USPS Board of Governors. The reason this is a big deal is because the Board of Governors is the only authority that can remove the Postmaster General from office. Now, if the Biden administration was going after a reversal here on the contract decision, that would add up. But again, things with the government often add up, but it never plays out. But that's something to keep an eye on here because if DeJoy is removed, the chances of the contract being reversed all of a sudden shoot way up. So you may be wondering, how good of a chance is this? We have a few things working in our favor, but in my own opinion, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. This is very highly unlikely that this will be reversed. I would not give it any more than a 20% chance of happening. Now, do I hope it happens? Of course I do. But I'm not going to get my hopes up and then just be disappointed all over again. However, with workhorse prices where they're at today at less than $15 per share, it looks like a pretty good buying opportunity or at least a good gamble to make going forward even if the reversal never happens, it could be a gamble where it's money you're willing to lose that could pay off big if the reversal does happen. So that leads me into my last point. What am I doing with my shares? Now, if you go back to my old videos, I have consistently stated that this is gamble money only for me. This was money I was willing to lose. Even though I purchased my shares at $2.50, if it went to zero, I would be fine with that. Now, I also said that if Workhorse would lose the contract, I would sell my shares. And it just makes the most financial sense to me. 
because at $2.50, the chances of me going down to break even or all of a sudden losing money on my investment are very, very low. So I might as well take the profits while I have them and then try and re-enter after the dust settles at a lower price. So yes, I sold 1,500 shares of Workhorse at $20 per share after the announcement was made. I also sold the call options I held with an expiration date in January of 2022. So at $20, I still got out of this investment with about a 550% return on my investment. So I can't complain whatsoever. I'm better off than the vast majority of people. Could I have made more if I had sold out at $35 or $40 per share? Absolutely, but there's no point in letting Mr. Hindsight sneak in because if everybody could see in hindsight, we'd all be trillionaires. We'd all be the richest person in the world. But now this begs the question, if I was at a loss, what would I do with my shares? So if I were in your shoes and you're sitting on a loss in your investment, I would hold on to my investment for dear life. But if you can hold on to your investment for a few years and let Workhorse succeed at all the other stuff it has planned, Chances are you're going to make a lot on your investment, even if you're negative right now. If you're in the opposite position where you're sitting at a profit currently, I obviously would choose to sell out of my shares and after the dust settles, try and buy back in at a lower price. The bottom line is this is still a very good speculative investment, even without the USPS contract. You're investing in a business with a really good niche in a booming industry, and that industry is only set to continue to grow exponentially. Workhorse still has UPS, FedEx, WB Mason, Ikea, etc. as customers right now. They have other customers. The USPS deal wasn't make or break for Workhorse as a company. They also possess a very attractive drone patent, which allows them to be the only vehicle manufacturer with the capability to launch a delivery drone from the top of a delivery vehicle. In the future, that patent is going to be worth a lot of money. However, there is still a big risk with this investment, which is why I still wouldn't put more than gamble money into it. The risk is this. Ever since I've been invested in the company, which again has been a long time, I've been here since $2.50 a share. Ever since then, the management team has continued to say, next quarter will be our quarter, next quarter will be our quarter, next quarter will be our quarter, and they keep pushing it back. Now, I understand we had a big pandemic, so I kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt, but we need to see deliveries happen. Otherwise, the business will fail. So if you're staying invested in this company, please make sure they stay on time with their current timeline. We don't want to see them continue to push back the production timeline. So now you may be wondering, Rex, where are you looking at buying back into this business? Because I did mention I'm interested in doing so. Personally, I'm not interested until it's $10 a share or less. Now that doesn't mean that it will go that low. That's just my own personal opinion. That is where I would personally start to think about buying back into the business. And again, that's because this is still a very strong speculative investment if the management team executes going forward. We don't want to see them continue to delay production and deliveries. We need to see that now. We need to see that this quarter or next quarter. Anything beyond that, we're in trouble because the USPS contract was not only a major catalyst for the stock price, but it was a major catalyst for the profitability timeline of the company as a whole. And without this contract, Workhorse is going to be unprofitable for a longer amount of time. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe below if you are new or returning and not yet subscribed. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. And with that, guys, I'll be back with a brand new video later this week. Peace out.